Hey, it's a Humble Collector here, and for today's video we're going to be doing something uh, a little different than we normally do, because uh, I picked up an interesting set of items at a local antique store over the week, and I think you guys will enjoy them. But before we can understand those, you must understand this. I know what you're thinking, that is the most hipster set of VR goggles I've ever seen. And you'll be correct, this is actually a stereoscope. Uh, the home version of this became very popular in the 1850s uh, onward through the early 20th century, going up into the 20s. And, yeah, it was basically a VR headset, for lack of a better way to explain it. You had a card that would go in this holster here, and then by adjusting it and looking through here, um, there'd be two pretty much similar images on there that when you look through it would merge into one three-dimensional image that had a lot of depth. And, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, but the reason that I was showing you this, I've had the stereoscope for a while, I enjoy this. Um, as I recently picked up at that antique store, this horrible looking monstrosity, which, granted the box is falling apart, but as you can see, is a stereographic library of the World War through Stereoscope, Volumes 1 and 2. And unfortunately, it's not a complete set, but still have a crap load of cards. Yeah, that was the back of that case falling off. It's not attached. It's just kind of floating in there. Uh, but yeah, so as you see, this is what a Stereoscope card looks like. So you have these two images, and then, yeah, when you look through, they kind of merge into one, and they create a three-dimensional image. I'd love to show that to you guys, but I don't even begin to understand how I'd be able to capture that on camera unless I had, like, one of those special 3D cameras, but I don't. But, yeah, I have about, I think it's like 80 cards here. Uh, some of them I had from before. Like, I had a couple from before, like this one with the Russian infantry. I love the name of this one, too. It's a bristling forest of bayonets. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, and then on the back of each card has a little bit of information. And you can imagine living in the, you know, right after World War I, you know, 1919, 1920, and having a set of cards like this to be able to really experience World War I almost firsthand, especially there are some action shots like this one, which is, um, which if it focuses, shells bursting on a ruined French village. And, like, in three, di in three dimensions, it's cool, because you can see, like, all that... That, that looks like dirt that's actually in the image. It's like debris being flown around. And then, yeah, the backs all have interesting, uh, you know, facts on them. Yep, some of these, unfortunately, are not in very good shape. Um, yeah, mess of barbed wire. Yeah, as you can see there, it's got a little bit of a, yeah, messed up there in the middle. And some of these actually surprised me. Yeah, that's another really messed up one. With how uh, how graphic some of these were, actually. I was surprised, you know, especially given this was pretty early. Let me see if I can find one of those more graphic ones for you. Yeah, like, look, look, look at this. Look at this. Um, yeah, German dead in a trench. Like, look, look at that. They'd be loath to show that on the news today, let alone in the 19, you know, 20s. So that's kind of, kind of crazy to think about. But, yeah, that kind of gave you... Oh, I love this one. It was a destroyed tank. And what's really cool is when you're focusing on, like, one part of these pictures, it almost looks like some of the other parts are moving, which maybe it's just because my eyes are weird, but, like, if I'm looking at this tank, I'm, like, looking over here. Out of the corner of my eye, it'll look like this puddle's actually, like, the water's moving. It's really cool, actually. Um, see, the, the first one that I saw when I picked this up was actually really graphic and surprised me. Let's see if I can find that. Well, there you go, there's more German dead, but that's not the one I was looking for. Oh, yeah, look, look, look at this one. That isn't it either, but look, you got dead Scottish Highlanders on the field there. But yeah, I can't even imagine being in the 1920s and seeing this. That really kind of drives home the war a little bit. It's probably going to be like the very last one. And... Oh, look, it is. Okay, well, I saved you guys that trip. Yeah, look, look at that. So yeah, I mean, as far as getting a first-hand look at World War I, this, you, you can't beat this, because not only do you have these really great pictures, but when you put them in this thing, which I can actually show you, just put the card in there, okay, put it 
put it in there. Now, yeah, as you can see, you'd adjust it till it became three dimensional. And I know that doesn't look three dimensional to you guys, so you can't really see most of that picture. But you, you get the gist. So we created like a three dimensional image. Um, which, if I take it and look at it, like. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of depth there. And these pictures are a lot more detailed than they look because it actually magnifies it a little bit too. And then, yeah, when you be done with that, you take it off and kind of shake the card out. You can put another one in. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool set. I don't know how many were in it originally. I don't think this is all of them because if you look at the box, if I put it on that next to that stack there, I'm probably missing eh, maybe 20 or so. I, I honestly don't know. But it makes sense. If it was a round set of 100. That'd be like 79.80 right there. So, yeah, stereoscope cards um, are very cheap. Actually, based on what I purchased these for, it worked out to like barely a, a little over a dollar a piece. And uh, yeah, stereoscope cards are military related. And there are a lot of them, like monuments, historical sites, and things like that. They're even cheaper. Um, really, when it comes to stereoscopes, the most expensive thing is going to be the viewer. Like, I lucked out. This viewer only ended up costing me, like, uh, I think it was, like, 60 bucks when I bought it. And most of them generally go for around 100 or so. So, it's not bad. But once you pay the price of admission, I mean, you got a world of 3D slides, you know, 70 years worth of them. And there are literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of them around. And you can find them on eBay. You can find them in antique store. Every antique store here in the U.S., if you look hard enough, you're probably going to find at least a couple of them. Because, you know, it was very popular and everybody had a few. So, yeah, so I'm not going to take pictures of all of those because that's just a lot of cards and I'd be here for hours, you guys be here for like an hour. So I'm going to pick like some of my favorites, take pictures of those for you guys. Uh, but yeah, other than that, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video and maybe you have some other stereoscope cards, you enjoy stereoscopes, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching.